So let, let me ask something for us to start. In Brazil, they are talking a lot about Asbury. Asbury. So have you heard about something that is going on in Asbury? What's going on there? Yeah, yes, I think it's been a week now. Yeah, probably a week. Seven or eight days. Recording. Could yeah. be nine days. Um, it's hard to say. Yeah. Where they had a prayer meeting, I mean a chapel meeting, and they gave testimonies and worship and prayed for each other, and it's gone nine, eight or nine straight days. Wow. And maybe 1,500 to 2,000 are there every day. I don't know if they're there all day. Okay. But at key times, maybe 2,000. Yeah. I've seen a few videos, nice. and I, I'm encouraged because other college campuses, particularly Christian ones I'm talking about, mm -hmm. they're being inspired, and some are, I mean, you can't make this happen. No. I mean, you could go a day or two in your own strength after that. <laughs> <laughs> But then, you know, yeah. yeah, but there's others that are that are being stirred in that direction. Okay. And so we don't know, you know, a month or two from now, we'll look back and see, you know, the scope of it and then a little bit more of the meaning of it. But we're all encouraged. That's so good. And we, we use a lot. And sometimes I think I don't know if it's in the right sentence, the word revival. And I want to know uh, what's your thoughts about revival? What is revival? For you. Yes, I, I don't use the word revival for things like this because okay. I use, you can use the word revival 10 different ways. Yeah. I made up 10. I, there's no real number. Okay. I use revival for the most intense okay. uh, historic visitation of the Holy Spirit. I use things like this as times of refreshing from the presence of the Lord. Good. From Acts chapter 3, verse 19 to 21, it says, Times of refreshing from the presence of the Lord. We've had a few of those seasons. I have seen, I've been in Kansas City 40 years. We've had several times of refreshing where some weeks and months we had more Holy Spirit activity than other times. And and it is it awakens us. It's good. Mm -hmm. I love it. Mm -hmm. But when I think of Revival, I use, in America's history, there's two great awakenings. They call okay. it the First Great Awakening, 1700s, 1750s. You know, it went on for some decades. Then the Second Great Awakening, 1800s. You say 1830, 40, 50. That's my grid. Okay. And all of the uh, Holy Spirit activity and many, many, rev quote, revivals are lesser than that. And I love it. Yeah. But I just don't use revival. I don't mind that other people do, yeah, but, yeah, I, yeah. but I don't. Personally. So uh, the first awakening, where was it? Uh, well, the East Coast of America. Jonathan Edwards. Okay. John Wesley. George Whitfield. Those are famous names in church history. Okay. And the second one? Uh, D.L. Moody, Charles Finney, names like that. Okay. How about Azusa? Uh, not, I mean, it was, it, it was important, yes. but Azusa is, is 1906. It's in Los Angeles and it's a little building Yes. and people would come to it, get filled with the Holy spirit and go back home. Mm -hmm. That's nothing like hundreds of thousands getting saved in a short period of time. Okay. I mean, it was important. The Azusa street revival. I would, I don't know that I would use revival okay. because the, it, I mean, thousands over the years got touched by the people who got touched by the people who got touched. So it's very significant. Mm -hmm. I would call the Wells Revival. That was 1904, two years before Azusa. And some historians will link the Azusa Street in 1906 in Los Angeles to what happened in Wells. Okay. In three months, 100,000 people came to Jesus in three months. Okay. In Wales, it came suddenly. It was over in three months. I mean, the fruit of it lasted longer, but it was a real intense whew, three a hundred thousand people in three months, wow. and it was chapels all over the land were being filled. Not there was one or there were two famous preachers, but many people were preaching and people were getting saved. I got it. So the first and second great awakening, many preachers, many locations. It wasn't one building you went to to get touched to go home. I got it. And, and I appreciate that. I like oh, yeah, that. Yeah, we, we won that. But right? that's <laughs> not exact. I'm looking for a third great awakening in America 
we're praying the same thing in Brazil for something. To, I mean, we're maybe 20 million people coming to the kingdom in Brazil. Uh, 20 million in a thousand locations. Whew. Okay. It's not everybody flying to two key cities to get in a building and line up to get prayed for. Okay. But I do appreciate that. Yeah. So so you're calling revival. When you say revival, you're saying something that touched the nation and it's uh it's not confined to a building, places. it's not confined to two or three key leaders. It's not a leader, okay. It's it's much bigger. And what are some marks? of the revival when you look to the history? The big one to me is the spirit of conviction. Okay. You know, in John 16, verse eight, Jesus said, the spirit will convict of sin, righteousness, and judgment. And in the first great awakening in America, 1750s, it was longer than that. That just give you an idea. The second great awakening, 1850s, thousands of people, hardened sinners would hear one message and they would be sobbing in parks, on streets, in church buildings. The word cut through them supernaturally like power. Hmm. That's the spirit of conviction. It's not just moved and go, wow, I think I want to give my heart to Jesus. That's good. Hmm. But I mean, they came in a kind of against it and were like the, like the word of God came like a sword and cut them their heart and they were broken and gave themselves to the Lord and you can't make that happen. That's yeah, more no. than good preaching, more than good worship leading, more than good stories. It's supernatural. And and the, the speakers themselves, the preachers are not that great. It's the spirit of conviction. They said, Jonathan Edwards, again, we're in 1840, 1850, 1860. He read the mm -hmm. sermon with candlelight at night because yeah. there's no electricity, right? Mm -hmm. 1740s, 50s. And he read it. And people were screaming out in the in the in the pews, oh crying yeah. out for forgiveness of sin. Sinners, no no religious experience. That's what I'm going for. But I like all the things uh, yeah. before that. I got it. I got it. So yeah, you we want more. Yes. Something more. The but, Lord. But we're not putting down the other stuff. No, we're, no, we're no. rejoicing in it. Yeah.